What can we read into Steve Borthwick's preliminary World Cup squad for England? How does it mean we're likely to see the England team play when they're in France? That's what this video is about. Thank you for watching. I'm Tim. This is Egg Chasers. And there are 67 days, as I record this, until the start of the Rugby World Cup. And in 67 days' time, I will be there in France. And then for the subsequent seven weeks, making sure you get all the rugby content I can possibly bring you. So hit subscribe, hit like, hit share, and leave your comments on this. Because I think we've had a bit of time now to digest Steve Borthwick's England squad. You can see some of the names of the forwards behind me. There was a few notable uh, omissions there. People cut from the squad, like Zach Mercer. Uh, for example, Theo Dan coming in because Luke Cowan Dickey is going to be out injured from the Rugby World Cup. Tom Willis has come in at number eight. Um, there's a few players still rehabilitating Ollie Chesham and Jack Walker and Billy Vanapola and one Mako Vanapola as well. Um, and then in the backs, some surprising names leaving the squad Alex Mitchell as scrum half, um, being just one of them. And no space for Rafi Quirk. Um, uh, uh, but what's interesting is rather than going through every position, I want to look at what this means in terms of how England are going to play. And, and my summary for this, and I'd love to know if you agree or disagree, leave your comments. We are going to see Leicester over the last few years under Steve Borthwick. Uh, a post he left, obviously, to become the England head coach. I think when I look at the England squad as it currently is, I think we're going to see England play just like Leicester did when Steve Borthwick took over. And the type of rugby that that is, is um, low possession, massive amount of kicking, huge defensive effort and trying to squeeze teams. And that sounds like quite a negative tactic. I think it's a very shrewd move from Steve Borthwick. He proved that Leicester that it is a great tactic for getting a group of people quickly onto the same page in terms of how to play. And also, look at previous World Cups. Look at the first 60 minutes of the last World Cup final that England lost to South Africa. And how did England lose? Because they got battered by South Africa, who squeezed them like a boa constrictor. And then in the last 20 minutes of the game, the game bust open because England were absolutely goosed by that point. So what leads me to believe that we're going to see England play like Leicester? Well, one, because that's how Steve Borthwick has already got a track record of doing it quite well. And I would go uh, another step further and say I think what we're going to see is not too a lot of similarities between England in 2023 and England in 2019. Again, something which a lot of England fans, maybe you, will not be happy about because you were quite unhappy with Eddie Jones. Are we getting... A different character, obviously, but Eddie Jones, his team, again, another World Cup further on. I think there's an argument for that as well. Let me make my case. Uh, Alex Mitchell is out. He's surplus to requirements. Now, the reason I was so excited about Alex Mitchell, why I've been singing his praises and in all my videos on the channel saying he's got to be England's starting scrum half. That's what I've, I still believe today, but it's not going to be the case. Alex Mitchell is a high-tempo player, Look at the way Northampton Saints play S such amazing, attractive rugby. And Alex Mitchell is amazing as a scrum half at a high tempo. I, I think England have missed a trick not picking him. But if you wanted to play a slightly slower box kick game, then you would go Jack Van Portfleet, Ben Youngs. I appreciate I'm sitting in front of the, the pictures uh, of these players. But yeah, Ben Youngs. I don't think he's a better rugby player than Alex Mitchell right now. He's been an England war horse over the years. He's been a stalwart. That's the word I was looking for. Um, but he, I don't think he deserves his spot in the squad on merit. But if you're trying to play the kind of game that I think Steve Borthwick's going to try and play, it makes sense. Another bit of evidence. Johnny May is still in the squad. I'm going to sit over here. There we go. Johnny May is still in the squad. And the fact Johnny May is still in the squad is another big bit of evidence to say that Steve Borthwick is going to play a highly controlled kicking game because Johnny May, is uh, he hasn't been in form for club or country for quite a while. He is absolutely amazing at chasing kicks. He's brilliant. Another bit of evidence, Zach Mercer has been cut from the England squad. If you were going to play a game where you didn't have possession of the ball very much and you kicked it to the opposition and tried to pressure them defensively, you wouldn't want Zach Mercer in your squad. 
because he's not that kind of a player. He's a player you have if you want to have ball players who can, uh, in, in a team that has possession and are trying to play uh, attacking rugby. I just don't think England are going to do that. Tom Willis, he's more the sort of number eight that you might want. He's come into the squad and he is very good at ball carrying, can truck it up in heavy traffic and is a work, big work rate player. And I think that just leads me to, that, that just makes me think even more that this is the way Steve Borthwick is going to go. If I looked at how he might may well therefore trim his squad down, I'm going to do this a little bit of a mixture between um, what I think he's going to do and what I would do. Let me get myself out of the way. And there you go. There's the, the England forwards. I think firstly, uh, you see I've already made one call there. Bevan Rod is gone because uh, Val Rapava, Ruskin and Joe Marler, big Big men. If you're going to play that Leicester type model, South Africa type model, uh, Bevan Rod is gone, and your loose head props of Val Rapava, Ruskin, Joe Marler, and Ellis Genge. Potentially, Mako Vanapola replaces Joe Marler. I don't mind either way. I want Val Rapava, Ruskin in there big time, and I want him to be the number two loose head. So we're fighting over who's the third spot, and um, I don't mind which one of those. I would also then, as you can see, uh, I've got rid of Johnny Hill. I think there's an argument that, well, basically, if I, th I think you have to cull a second row anyway from this squad, and that would be the one that I'd get rid of. Uh, the the next one in, in that position, I would probably think Oli Chesham, if it comes in, and that may be at the expense of George Martin. I know Steve Borthwick absolutely loves George Martin, so he could end up being in the squad, but that's kind of just my guess. And I think he's going to go for Billy Vanapoli, you know? And this is why I say I think there's going to be a massive amount of similarity between the 2023 England World Cup squad and the 2019 one. There's enough changes that make me quite excited. Tom Pearson, uh, Val Rapava Ruskin. Those those guys are ones that make me excited. So, but there you go. That's how I think it's going to go. Uh, and next, I think those two guys go. Oh, sorry. Jump back. Alex Dombrandt and Ben Earl. I'm, I'm going to say they're the other two that miss out. Jack Walker could come back into the squad if fit. And he would probably replace Theo Dan. I'm just leaving Theo Dan there because I wouldn't. I would, But there you go. Based on how I think Steve Borthwick is going to play it and a little bit of what I would want, I think that could well be your England World Cup forward uh, squad. We've got a month. Uh, August the 7th, I think, is when Steve Borthwick names his squad. Um, so there you go. And I'll get on to the, how I think the, the first choice eight might go um, after that. As for the backs, as I say, Alex Mitchell is gone. Joe Thock and the singer are still there. I'm, I'm, I mean, those two I would not have predicted. Um, Ollie Lawrence is rehabbing. Uh, and if he is fit, he will come back in. And I think it will be for Guy Porter out of the names there. And I'm thinking you could probably got to shave this back line down to 15 names, having done 18 for the forwards. So the next person, as you can see, Joe Thock and the singer would go in my humble opinion um particularly if ollie lawrence is fit because then you've got big men elsewhere johnny may i'm gonna say won't make the cut because i think there are other better players although i could quite believe johnny may is gonna make it we'll see uh max malins is the one i that's that's more if i were picking because i love elliot daly but i think it probably will be the other way around and malins will stay and daly will go but there we go as oh yeah sorry and that and that is your back line the squad but how are they going to line up in a match in that first game against Argentina or if they get there to a quarter final against Wales or Australia or if they get further than that to Ireland New Zealand uh, South Africa or France in the semi-final well this is my best guess uh, and again this is a this is a hybrid of what I think he's going to do and what I would like him to do I think if everyone's fit Farrell, Lawrence, Slade will probably be your starting midfield. Of the scrum halves that are there, I'd go for Danny Kerr. Alex Mitchell would be my choice. But th this is this is me picking now. Uh, and the back row, Pearson, Curry, Willis, Jack Willis. I like the look of that a lot. I love the look of that back row. And the fact there are so many other sevens in the squad, Underhill, um, Ben Earl, Lewis Ludlam can play seven. Jack Willis can play seven. Tom Pearson plays seven. 
I think Tom Curry is not going to be used mainly as a number seven. He's going to be a six or an eight. And I'm going to go for an eight in this instance. That would be my starting 15 on the bench. I just think there's impact there. Laura Parva Ruskin, Jamie Blamire, Will Stewart, Dave Ribbons, Lewis Ludlam, Jack Van Portfleet and Henry Arundel. I think that's got some impact off the bench. I am going to throw you a curveball though. Um, if Lawrence is out, then the obvious thing to think is, oh yeah, we'll just bring Tuolangi in. However, and you're probably not going to like this, but I've been saying this for a while on this channel, don't rule out the likelihood that in the World Cup you see Ford and Farrell. Maybe with Tuolangi outside at 13. Maybe with Henry Slade. I'm just going to go back to that point that I've been making this whole video is... The way Steve Borthwick is lining his team up, the if Ollie Lawrence is not available, that may be England's best midfield. People aren't going to like it. Um, oh, let me get <laughs> let me get myself back a minute. People aren't going to like it, but that may well be the reality of the situation we're looking at. Uh, I, I just think it's. I'm surprised about uh, some of the selections. I'm excited about some of the players that are still in the squad. I hope Ollie Lawrence is fit so we have options in the midfield. I don't necessarily think Ford Farrell to Alangi would be the worst thing ever. It got us to a Rugby World Cup final. Will it win us a World Cup? I'm not convinced any team that England put out uh, can win us a World Cup this time round. I think Steve Borthwick is going to play, as I've been saying, really pragmatic rugby quite a basic style of rugby sounds boring yes I also think it's effective um, that's just my initial thoughts when I'm trying to piece things together I might change my mind again in a couple of days certainly we'll see when the squad gets actually announced on the 7th of August and depending on the fitness of some of those players in the meantime and um, there's more content coming on this channel so hit subscribe leave your comments and I'll see you on the next one